McGuire's welcomes you to the car craziest half hour on television. Traveling the world to prove that all car guys are the same. Regardless of where we live on the planet or what type of cars we love, the passion is the same. We're all just totally car crazy. It's about the hood. Welcome to Car Crazy Central, ground zero for monitoring the major events and personalities of the car hobby around the world. Each week, we creatively serve up a full menu of car crazy passion for you to enjoy via our car crazy television and radio shows, as well as on demand through our website, carcrazycentral.com. Our mission is pure and simple. <laughs> oh, that's right. We want to make you just a little more I became Otis the used car salesman, oh Lieutenant Chandler used car salesman, no and I bought hundreds of cars. We published the first issue of Hot Rod Magazine, and I remember it came through. Pete had borrowed and begged the money he's told, the wonderful story yeah. of how he started. Uh, we put together the finest collection of rare American muscle cars ever put together. You couldn't do it again. Uh, we wound up with close to 70. And now your host. Barry McGuire. While he won the world's respect for rejuvenating the Los Angeles Times as its publisher from the 1960s to the 1980s, Otis Chandler was a car guy's car guy all of his life. At his very core, Otis was a hunter, and he hunted wildlife, rare cars, and rare motorcycles with equal vigor, ultimately creating one of the choicest car museums in the world, the Chandler Vintage Museum of Transportation in Oxnard, California. Otis was bigger than life in the car hobby. Precious few people will ever have such a profound impact on the car hobby as revered collector, competitor, historian, statesman, philanthropist, and curator. As we mourn his loss, we want to celebrate his life, which was undeniably certifiable. Car crazy! Well, the Chandler name is famous in the Los Angeles area and worldwide for more than just cars and being car guys, but of course this media empire that you have run. Uh, give me a little capsule. Uh, our viewers would probably enjoy a little insight to, uh, to understand yes. Otis Chandler, the, mm -hmm. uh, the businessman. It's been an uh, exciting business career, Barry. I really, I mean, I love the cars and I love to do all of that, but this, that's had to take a very secondary role to my full-time profession. I'm the fourth publisher of the Times. It was started by my great-grandfather, General Otis, and he bought it in 1881. And then my grandfather, Harry, and then my father, Norman, and then I became publisher in 1960. I trained in all the departments when I got out of the Air Force and worked yeah. in every department. I sold advertising and I worked in the press room and all of that. And then after I left the Times, I ran the Times Mirror Company, which owns other newspapers and media around the country. So you were involved in Speed Vision. You yes. started Speed Vision way well, back at the beginning, right? We had a cable division and we were starting uh, to create original cable programming. And we had started the Outdoor Life Channel and then um, our cable guy had come up with this concept for, uh, for uh, Speed Vision. We sold the concept, and, uh, I, and of course it's been a huge success. I wish we'd kept it, I wish we'd stayed with it, because then you'd be working for me. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some footage on Speed Vision with, with your cars before. This time we're gonna focus a little more than Otis Chandler, the man, the patient, the fire. Okay. What, what, what is it that makes you tick and, and create some place like this? Well, you first of all have to be crazy about cars. And uh, secondly, you have to have a nice facility to put them in. Then you have to pick the right ones. You don't just uh, pick exactly. them off. The, pick them. You have to have great taste. Well, I hope, <laughs> I hope that's the right word. I think I have some taste. And I think I have some, uh, uh, I have some cars here that aren't found anyplace else and won't be found anyplace else. Well, Otis, you are certifiably car crazy, and it goes way back to when you were a kid. My dad used to bring home a new model 41 CAD convertible, and I thought that was just the greatest thing you know of course I wasn't driving then and he had me take care of it and wash it and detail it and things like that so, so you, I got you, my hands dirty yeah oh sure yeah. you drive them you take care of them um, you race them which I'm fortunate enough to do yeah. we particularly like to take taking care of them yes <laughs> yes taking care of them yes I read the magazines and You're I read the classified magazine yeah and I read the <laughs> classifieds hot rod magazine you know I never told Pete this story I was working for Times Mirror Press which was our commercial printing operation we published the first issue of Hot Rod Magazine, and I remember it came through. Pete had borrowed and begged the money he's told, the wonderful story yeah. of how he started. Either we printed the slick cover, 
or the inside, but I remember when this came through and I was there in the press room. That was 1948. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, so. Then to Stanford and I started off with a used Harley knucklehead. Mm -hmm. Then I went in the Air Force and uh, all the guys and gals, when they were shipped to Korea, had to sell their cars. I was there. Mm -hmm. I became Otis the used car salesman, oh Lieutenant Chandler used car salesman. No and I bought hundreds of cars, all models, and you know, the guys would say, I want 2,000 or 3,000, and I'd say, no, that's too much. Uh, maybe that's where I learned to bargain a little bit, and mm -hmm. that's responsible mm -hmm. maybe somewhat for my collection of how to buy cars at the right price. And so um, they would finally get their shipping orders, and I'm leaving tomorrow. And what do you offer me? And I said, 500 bucks. $500? It's worth da-da-da-da. So I... <laughs> I went through probably 200 cars when I was stationed at that base. And I'd, you know, I'd polish them and fix them up and then sell them. And uh, that gave me a chance to, I mean, not, not great cars. I mean, I had a couple of Porsches maybe yeah. or something like that. But it's always been with me and uh, it's, a, it's a sickness. There's no question about it. It's, um, you know, other people uh, do other things, but uh, yeah. I'm a car guy. When we come back, we'll see the most complete muscle car collection ever assembled and we'll learn what Otis Chandler had in common with Paul Newman. So don't go away. It's all right here on Car Crazy. Car Crazy. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy and our tribute to the late publisher and car guy, Otis Chandler. Your first car, your first real car. It was a plain Jane 49 Pontiac four-door. Yeah, and then your first notable car. First notable car was 1968. I'd read about the Duesenberg. Most people never heard of it, thought it was a German car, yeah, but yeah. I knew where, what it was and all about them. I'd read whatever books were available. I wanted to have as my first car a Duesenberg, yeah. Durham Tourister, because I'd seen Gary Cooper's. There was a two-line ad of a uh, 31 uh, Duesenberg Durham Tourister. It's $25,000. Nobody had paid that much up oh, to that yeah. time and just got in ahead of Leo Gephardt, Tom Barrett, and all the, all the sharks. <laughs> I just got to her. Timing is everything. Got, a, got an agreement. So that was my first car, 25000 And I didn't want to tell my wife or anybody down at the company because they think I was crazy. You know, you pay that for an old 31 car. And uh, so that was, my first per that was my first owner Amazing. car. Amazing. I had a modest collection of um, classic cars, one antique. But I had some racing Porsches, 917K, 91730, Porsche Speedster Carrera had a few classics um, and then I decided I want to collect something that's very important in American car history and I got interested and read about and bought all the books and did my homework on American muscle cars which really you can argue when they started but some people say it started with uh, 1964 with a certain Pontiac mm -hmm. uh, model mm -hmm. yeah. and then it went to 1972 a time of the uh, gas shortage and the big insurance rates went up we put together the finest collection of rare American muscle cars ever put together. You couldn't do it again. Uh, we wound up with close to 70. For example, I had 17 Hemi Cudas. We really had a great collection of cars and they were in this museum. Then I decided I didn't want them anymore and so I quietly sold all of my muscle cars, every single one over about an eight month period. I'm back to my really first love, which is yeah. uh, the classic. The, I like the antiques equally as well. And I have some great antiques here. And all of my classic cars, uh, starting in 1930, going up through 1942, six Cadillac B16s and Packard 12s and Lincoln 12s. I really like this era. I have a great passion for art and cars like the classics and some of the French cars. I mean, the yeah. cars that Peter Mullen, I mean, yeah. I never got interested in there. Mm -hmm. Those are pieces of art. Those yeah. are moving the, sculpture. The Delahays and the Cowboys. Yeah, Taubos. those are moving sculpture. Yeah, well, yeah. I think the great American classics with their big headlights and their big grills and all of that, it's art. That's another dimension of my craziness for, for cars. I mean, let's face it, if, if you have the resources to invest in something, you can invest in, in the stock market and you have stock certificates and they are, they're in the vault and you can sit around every day and look at the ticker or call up now the internet and see how your stocks are doing. Or if you have a passion for cars, say, you buy a car, you can drive them, you can show them, you yeah. can share them, you can exactly. touch them. It's hard for everybody else to enjoy your stock certificates, you know, but with the cars, everybody can enjoy it with you, right? right. Racing cars has really been one of your passions. It has, I've done a limited amount. 
I had bought a 917K John Wire golf sponsored car, one of the most famous Porsches ever made. It was in the movie Le Mans and restored it. And then I thought, well, you know, I can drive pretty fast on the street and I can ride motorcycles. I don't need to learn how to drive a race car. There is a skill. And there is a skill. The and I that. spun the car in front of everybody. Oh, no. I spun the car, went off the road in the marbles, and everybody, ha ha, there's Chandler. He's trying to drive a fast car, he doesn't know what he's doing. And so right after that, I signed up for race school and took Michael. He had a career, I think, in front of him, which it wound up he did. He next year went right to Indy, and he had four great years, and then he had a horrible crash, yeah, but he's, crash. he's fine. Well, I got turned on, and, and I, in fact, the final day, Michael and I, they put us in little Formula Fords and so on, you know, and I wanted to beat him. He wanted to beat the old man, you know, and, and, and it, was, it was, so that really got me excited. Came out of race school. With Bondurant. With Bondurant. Do I go to... Um, Formula 3 and all that stuff, and I knew I couldn't do all that because I'm a full-time executive at the time. So I no. said, I'll, I'll start with a twin-turbo 935, 220-mile-an-hour <laughs> car, and I'll, I'll participate in the Watkins Glen uh, six-hour endurance. At that time, Paul Newman and I were the oldest international licensed uh, professional drivers, participated in a celebrity race back there, too, before. When we come back, Barry will speak with Otis and his lovely car guy wife, Bettina Chandler, at the most prestigious car show in the world. So stay tuned. It's all right here on McGuire's Car Crazy. Hey, hey, Barry, my ride is so sweet. Hop on over and talk to me. So my good friends, Otis Bettina Chandler, uh, often a judge, uh, always bringing fabulous cards to this event, and, and you are a car guy. I am a car guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. The works of art these cars are is fabulous, and people watching is fabulous. It is something. I mean, the people that are here are amazing. Otis, you've been doing this for a lot of years. I won a best of show in 72 with a Mercedes and been coming here ever since. And I like to see the expansion into different kinds of cars, even though I don't happen to maybe care for street rods or maybe a couple of cars like that. There's a place for them here, and I, I think it's wonderful. They, uh, I'd be glad to see muscle cars here once I was going to say, you may not be into street rods, but muscle cars you are definitely into. Yeah. My old yellow Hemi Cuda convertible that's a clone on Don Johnson's Miami Vice, but that's yeah. a 446 pack. My car just sold for a million two. Now, 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 and, and they're young guys, they're young guys. It's a whole new crowd of young people coming in in their late 30s, maybe their dad had one, their uncle had one, and they can afford a Hemi or a Challenger or whatever. I guess what I miss is more of just this show. It used to be just this show was it. Right. It was a, everybody knew everybody and so on, but yeah. I'm just getting old, and so I remember the old days. <laughs> Once again, you have a couple of cars in the field. Tell us, tell us what you brought this time. Yes, I bought a 1911 Simplex, one of a kind, open car, very rare. And then I like the preservation clasp. This is the cars that are unrestored. We bought a 1916 Crane Simplex, completely unrestored, wonderful car, a dual cal Phaeton. And it's the, it was the forerunner of all dual cows. There's no other earlier dual cow than my crane simplex. Wow. So that's fun. Wow. I sponsored that class, so I hope I see you. <laughs> see, uh, okay. Shake your hand up at the podium this afternoon. Well, Otis Bettina Chandler, everybody, dear friends and, and, and great supporters of the car hobby in every respect. Participants, fans, cheerleaders, they do it all. Now did you ever find a car so fine as mine? It's time to see how car crazy you are. In 1903, for how much money was the first Ford Model A sold? $195, $450, $850, or $995? How about it, think you know? We'll find out a little later in the show. When we come back, we'll relive Otis Chandler's unique and notable racing career and his relationship with Roger Penske and Penske Racing. You don't want to miss this. It's right here on... Car Crazy! Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy and our touching tribute to the late car hobby giant, Otis Chandler. We're here in Oxnard, California at the Vintage Museum of Transportation and Wildlife with none other than the curator, founder, and, and great car guy, Otis Chandler. Nice to have you here, Barry. You know, you never do anything halfway, and that applies equally well to your racing career. 
I love to race. I'm a very competitive person. Don't, don't ride a bicycle with me today or a motorcycle with me today because even at age 72, you might lose. And uh, I'm just built that way. I've always been in competitive athletics. And um, we had one car, one engine, and we were up against all the big boys from Europe with their big semis, with their backup cars and all that. We had, we had one car to practice, one car to qualify, and one car to make the race. We wound up uh, sixth overall out of 35 cars and third in our class, this unknown te team from California with this 50-year-old grandfather publisher. That I was in Time and Newsweek, great. and not that I was a great racer, just this guy started racing at age 50, you know? And so it was, it was, it was a blast. And uh, then I came home and did start vintage racing in the, in the 917-30, and that, that is a that's a different level. I just felt privileged to own that car. When I, and a cute story, I, I called Penske and I said, uh, do you have, you have any interest in selling that 917-30 because they outlawed it after the 74 Can-Am series. It just it's annihilated everybody else. Yeah. And he said, yeah, I might sell it. I made a deal for just a slightly over 100,000. And uh, the car today is probably worth four, five million. But Penske didn't know. And I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him what it was probably really worth, but he, yesterday's race car wasn't important to, at that time. He was looking in the future, and I don't blame it. Yeah. I had a little seat, and I could take people for a ride. Took a lot of people for rides. I said before they got in, try to touch the dashboard when I'm coming out of eight, when I'm really nailing it. You can't. You can't. Zero to 200 in under 10. Yeah, it's, it's a car that will never be built again. You heard that come around Riverside. You heard that sound, and there's no sound since, even close to it. That was a car, but I don't own it anymore. What it had done under Roger Penske and Mark Donahue, the, the technology of a car. People say, why don't you grow up, Otis? I mean, this is the favorite comment. Why don't you, why don't you grow up and, and, and put the bike aside, put the Porsche aside, and so on? And my answer is, why? Yeah. Why? I mean, if you can still move and your still coordination is fairly good, which mine is. That's thank what goodness. you're all about. You I want mean, to give up what you're all about. Yeah, I mean, be a couch potato the rest yeah, of your I life. Know. At this point in time, it, it's so obvious that you're much relieved and you're just having the time of your life yes. now with, with really yeah. focusing on the, yeah. the, the, the things that light your fire, which is the passion for cars. But now I will have the time to enjoy my cars, the motorcycles, surfing and bicycling and my grand, I got 17 grandchildren and a lot of things that I'd like, travel and so on. So. 17 gonna... grandchildren, 17 car guys and gals, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> when we come back, we'll find out for how much money in 1903 the first Ford Model A sold for. Oh, so don't go away. It's right here on Car Crazy. So in 1903, for how much money was the first Ford Model A sold? Well, hold on to your wallets, folks. If you were the first to purchase a Ford Model A in 1903, you would have dished out a whopping $850. And according to Wikipedia.org, not to be confused with the second version 1927 Model A, the first Model A was also called the Ford Mobile. The horizontally mounted flat two-cylinder engine was situated at the midpoint of the car. It produced eight horsepower and a three-speed planetary transmission was fitted, later used on the Ford Model T, and it could reach a top speed of 45 miles per hour. Well, dishing out that first $850 was Dr. Ernest Fenning of Chicago, Illinois. Oh, and if you knew this pricey bit of car trivia, oh, you must be car crazy. And now, once again, Barry McGuire. Thank you again for sending your car crazy confessions to our website, carcrazycentral.com. I read every one of them, and they're so fascinating, come from so many different parts of the car hobby. We have an interesting one here from Jim Morrison who writes, I've been crazy about cars even before being crazy about cars was cool. I caught a lot of flack in public schools for daydreaming about cars and drawing cars when other studies were supposed to be what I was working on. I've had over 200 cars and trucks since 1970. Some grocery getters, some better. Like a 67 RS Camaro 327 Powerglide, a 340 4-speed 70 Swinger, a 340 4-speed 72 Duster, a 73 Dart, a 70 Nova 350 Auto, and my favorite is a 77 Formula Firebird, which I've owned for almost 29 years. I'm putting a 500 horsepower 455 in it just because I can. I don't want to race it, just want it to sound cool and be able to spin the tires at 60 miles an hour. 
It has 36,700 original miles on it. Anyway, my point of writing to you is to thank you for hosting this fabulous show. When you say you enjoy doing the show, it is obvious that you do it not for the remuneration, but because you are a rare person who cares for his fellow man, a real people person. I am fortunate to be alive when telecommunications, and this is an important point, exceeded any of my expectations back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and to share the same time as you. Many thanks for your tireless efforts and that of your staff to bring us so much information about other car nuts and their accomplishments as well. Sincerely, Jim Morris. Well, Jim, you need to upload videos of your cars and put it on the community section of our Car Crazy Central website. Let me tell you, you make an interesting point. In years past, our individual knowledge about cars and the car hobby was pretty well limited to what we experienced with our friends and read about in car buff magazines that focus on our types of cars, you know what I mean? I was fortunate because I grew up in a family business whose products were being used on every type of cool car imaginable. So I've had the rare opportunity to experience and enjoy all parts of the car hobby all over the world most of my life. And that's why I'm so comfortable in all parts of the car hobby and why I want to show it to you with the Car Crazy Television, Car Crazy Radio, and best of all now our website, carcrazycentral.com. The big difference today is Speed Channel. You want to know why the car hobby is growing so fast and diversifying like it is? It was Speed who opened the door for the first time and invited all of us to enjoy the car hobby in its totality. Well, Jim, you said that today's telecommunications for the car hobby have far exceeded everything you could have expected decades ago. And you know what? You are so, so right. Now you can occasionally catch Car Guy programming on numerous stations, even the major networks sometimes, thanks to the pioneering done by Speed that proved that there are enough of us car guys around to support quality Car Guy programming. You know what? Speed is still the only network that does that 24-7. I'm saying this because it needs to be said. It's true, and not because our show is on speed. And I want to say that on behalf of the millions of us throughout North and South America who learn more about the car hobby every day because of the fabulous car guy programming on speed, to all of you at speed who drive the car hobby into our homes, impacting the car hobby like no one else ever has or ever will, we are in your debt and hugely thankful to you for making more and more of us car crazy. Here's some really big news. Now you can upload videos of yourself and your car for the world to see on carcrazycentral.com. Send car crazy e-cards, download car crazy screensavers, catch up on car crazy news, watch car crazy television shows on demand, and enjoy our vast selection of original car crazy humor videos and cartoons guaranteed to make you laugh out loud. This is the meeting place for car guys worldwide, and it's all free right now on carcrazycentral.com where the car hobby clicks. Car crazy.